it's a great pleasure to have uh, Haro Sokman uh, uh, present uh, on behalf of uh, their startup, Kepler. Um, yes, Haro, the floor is yours. I'm the CEO of Kepler Vision Technologies. We are a spin-off from the University of Amsterdam. <coughs> and we bring to the market uh, the first artificial intelligence in the world that looks after the well-being of patients in hospitals and long-term care facilities. Uh, we use computer vision, machine learning to recognize patients that need uh, help. For instance, patients that cannot get out of bed, patients that try to get out of a wheelchair who shouldn't, patients that go into the bathroom and do not come out, or patients that have fallen on the floor and cannot get up. And in that case, we alert nurses within 60 seconds. This has two major advantages. One is the well-being of the patients. They don't have to lay on the floor for hours to be helped, but they are helped within seconds. Secondly, it improves the productivity of caregivers by 50%. And this is important because in the Netherlands alone, there are over 100,000 job vacancies. Um, as a startup, we are... Um, yeah, we, we, we are moving from being a startup to, to being a scale-up. Um, we have signed our first uh, multi-year uh, software license agreement. We now do pilots in Switzerland, in Belgium and the UK. We have raised 4 million euros and we, I expect to close a new round next month. We have 14 patents filed of which four are granted. We have medical device registration and currently we are in big need for an experienced project manager and for experienced sales executives. So if that is you, uh, contact me. And Stratus, that was the Kepler Vision pitch. Okay, so uh, it's a great pleasure to have um, Herbert Denhaven from Pfizer uh, present uh, uh, next. The floor is yours. yours. Okay, good yeah. afternoon. Thank you. My name is Herbert Denhaven. I'm the CEO of Pfizer. We are a computer vision company spin-off from the TU Delft. And uh, we have got a product to enable robots to pick unknown items in parcels, like parcels and item picking in e-commerce, uh, anything that's always different. And uh, so we, uh, we license that out worldwide. We've got a global team currently with 30 people. And uh, I wanted to use the two minutes also to share my knowledge to the, to the other uh, participants. Um, the, what I learned in the, in the last uh, few years is you have to choose. Are you going to be a service provider or do you want to have a product? Are you going to look for a region or are you going to go global? Do you want to go direct to the end users, have a complete solution, or do you want to go via partners? Uh, that's the first one, to choose, really choose. And there's better to choose than not to choose. Second thing is to validate. We grew bootstrapped. It's hard, but it is one big advantage. You need to ask money. So you need to validate your proposal. So you, 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 if you ask money, you, they will tell you, okay, you have to deliver this and this. And so you will also learn faster. So I believe it's really good thing to have it in your DNA to get some kind of bootstrap thing in your, in your company. So you really need to understand what are the needs and how to bring value. So let's choose, validate. Third one is speed and urgent. Um, urgent. I'm a mentor for the last five years at Yes Delft, and I see a lot of... Uh, uh, entrepreneurs and they have some subsidy or they have a are still student and and stuff and they have all the time in the world and they uh, they're still developing and I think I can manage for a year and I want them to feel the urge so uh, if you come to work you will earn 4k a month so if you are with four persons it's 16k a month you're investing in your company so it's not a hobby it's money so I, I just want them to realize to, to you need to know, will it work? Will it? Will the clients pay? Will it deliver? Can it scale? So all those questions, you need to know the answers as soon as possible. So I'm helping with that. So the speed. And the last one is to ask help. I think I learned as well. Uh, there are a lot of people that are willing to help. They have a lot of knowledge in, on all kinds of aspects. And I would just go and ask for help. And it's never. I, I learned one thing at INSEAD. Uh, it's never a bad idea to talk to a client. <laughs> To go and ask questions. That's it. Thank you very much, Herbert, for uh, the very nice uh, My uh, pleasure. pitch presentation. Um, next, uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, Gabriel Lebani. <clears throat> it's a great pleasure. He was one of our master students who's uh, um, 
uh, initiative uh, got transformed into uh, in trickle AI. So, uh, Gabriel, can you uh, join us on stage? W welcome. Uh, Thank you. The floor is yeah, the floor is yours. Yes. Okay, okay, perfect. So we are Intricle AI and we build automatically uh, complete dossiers for comprehensive decision making. So let's start. And uh, we started with the AI Startup Lab, which uh, Vladimir explained uh, before. So we are one of the first uh, graduates from there. Uh, our challenge was together with uh, ABN AMRO, we saw a market opportunity, our prototype was successful. So officially September last year, we founded Intricle AI. Uh, the problem we solve, we like to use this uh, funny GIF and uh, we call it needle in haystack. So we're in the context of M&A, mergers and acquisitions. Uh, there are dozens of analysts in, M &A, in uh, ABN in particular, how we started, uh, that every day they have to build company profiles, they have to do market research, and they have to really assess and find information about companies and markets. How do they do this? A lot of time is spent on Google, just doing query after query, and then they have to fill in their slides. Uh, we found out that this is a bit repetitive, and also, uh, since it's the same problem, but for different targets, uh, then we proposed our solution for which with just one click, uh, you can have the whole profile of a company or of a market and start your search and your whole investigation from this dashboard, uh, because otherwise the users don't have a proper platform to do so. And we try to find really the information that you cannot directly search on Google as well. For example, just to give you a hint, a market driver. What is a market driver? What is driving the market? It typically takes a long time for the analysts to find this. But with AI, we can identify this and really help them in finding this information. Finally, the value that we bring is uh, quicker decision making, but also being sure that no information is missed and also more likelihood of, uh, well, closing a deal, starting and closing a deal. And soon as you see, we'll also have more complete market profiles. Uh, this is our team, very briefly. I didn't start my stopwatch, so I don't know how much time passed. But I will just say that uh, we have a good combination of core software engineering skills and entrepreneurial mindset from Alvise. I myself am a bit more on the research side, really core AI side. And we have a new addition to the team, very recent, uh, Yerun, who uh, will deal with everything else uh, in the company. Thank you so much uh, for listening. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask. I would like to talk about us for hours, but uh, yeah. Maybe <laughs> you can ask me questions. Uh, there is a question by Ruben Boyd. How does this give people a better experience than for platforms around such as Crunchbase and global data and many others? Yeah, so they are to be seen as complementary. Okay. Crunchbase can give you some information. I will answer very quickly. Uh, so it's a bit more of a database, uh, but we really try to look at the news, so the textual information. Uh, and that uh, is not for all companies, not for all use cases, but it can really bring a lot of value. You can ask me more questions, of course. I would uh, recommend talking to Gabriele if you're a student, a master student, since uh, Gabriele was uh, a master student at the University of Amsterdam. So he can uh, tell you more about um, uh, the process. Uh, so uh, uh, next. Uh, I would like to invite uh, on stage uh, Ugnius Rimsa from uh, La La Land. Hello. Good afternoon. The floor is yours. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, my name is Ugnius Rimsa. I am one of the co-founders here at La La Land. In a, in a very short sentence, uh, basically, we create uh, humans for the fashion e-commerce industry. Uh, we actually went through ACE before uh, AI Lab uh, existed unfortunately uh, but uh, so we have had the, our fair share of experience in Star Village uh, but let me get started and uh, jump right into it <clears throat> uh, so if you go to almost uh, any fashion e-commerce store uh, one problem quite quickly uh, pops up and that's basically if you look at the models that are being displayed uh, they're usually of one uh, ethnicity type one body type uh, one age group um, and are quite how do you say uh, not inclusive, and it's quite hard to imagine uh, for everyone uh, how that piece of garment would actually look uh, on you. Um, and this kind of causes quite a few problems uh, for brands. Uh, so firstly, uh, missed customer acquisitions. So a lot of people that uh, you know, have a hard time imagining how, let's say, that T-shirt will look on them, basically just you know, don't buy it because they, they, it's, quite, it's a risk, basically. Uh, and if they do buy it, uh, a lot of the time they realize, okay, this is not actually what I was looking for, uh, that, which basically... Uh, produces high return rates 
And uh, unfortunately, we live in a time where, uh, for a lot of brands, it's actually cheaper to throw away the returned goods than it is actually to re clean them, repackage them, and sell them again. Uh, so it's also quite a big, uh, how do you say, environmental problem uh, that's caused. Uh, so it kind of trickles down. So some people ask, okay, so why fashion brands are not, you know, uh, trying to solve this issue? Why, why don't they just photo shoot more models of different ethnicities, uh, so on? Uh, and that's basically, if you look at the current process of traditional photography, it's quite a complex, uh, you know, long chain. So firstly, you need to, you know, cast human models. Uh, you have, there's buyout fees. You have to find photographers, stylists, venues. So there's a whole list of things that you have to, you know, take care of. And all of this takes quite a lot of time and it's quite expensive as well. Uh, so we want to enable brands basically to uh, stop selling this one type of model and start selling more reality or humanity. Uh, and that's kind of this more inclusive portfolio of models. Uh, and we call our solution basically their aspirin. Uh, and what we do uh, is use generative AI to uh, generate synthetic human models. Uh, and from our customers or brands, basically, uh, we only require uh, inputs uh, of garment, basically, that you see on the very left side. And then basically, uh, we map this garment to the synthetic models that they have selected. Uh, and what we offer is basically, like I mentioned before, different hairstyles, different ethnicities, body types, you know, poses, kind of the same thing that they can get, uh, uh, you know, with current existing or close to what they can get. Uh, and we try to replicate that in a faster way, in a more affordable way. Uh, so basically, uh, how this works for the brand. Uh, so basically, you know, you select the model you like, you choose the hairstyle you like, uh, upload the, you know, the garments. We basically prepare these models and uh, we then basically you receive them and then how you use them is up to you. Uh, and that's how we're trying to solve the issues I mentioned previously. Uh, yeah, and that's kind of what we do. And here's a few examples of our customers. So Wacom, Stiglitz, Dockers, Soft. Uh, and these are all models that are live and uh, are being used currently uh, by our customers. Uh, yeah, thank you for your attention and uh, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, we have a comment, another question. Uh that uh, it reminds uh, uh, this idea reminds of how i can dress a character in an rpg um <clears throat> and how do models feel that you're taking their jobs <laughs> that's an interesting yeah. question that's that's quite any... yeah i don't know Feedback. i always use the, the comparison of uh, the elevator so when the elevators first came out there was somebody you know pro uh, pulling a lever to go up or down up or down uh, most people got replaced by you know elevator computer system, which takes you to the fifth or sixth floor. Uh, so I think it's the same push happening in the field of AI where some jobs will be replaced. Uh, and it's kind of like no hard feelings, but I think, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's kind of like my view on it. It's happened before and it's going to happen again. Uh, but yeah. I see. And uh, a follow up question. How dependent are you on GPU resources? Uh, quite dependent, but luckily we were early on accepted to the NVIDIA inception program. Uh, back in the when we started off, uh, which actually without it, it would have been almost impossible, but uh, we got access to very high end NVIDIA GPUs through that program, uh, where we actually did all, all our training rounds uh, on either V100s and then A100s later on when they released. Uh, by Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I would like now to invite uh, next to on stage uh, Cesar uh, Caral from uh, 3D University. Um, Welcome, Cesar. Uh, the floor is yours. Hello. I will just share my screen. Yeah. Hello, I'm Cesar Carol. I'm CTO and co-founder of Third University. I will just move to my presentation. So what kind of information you can get uh, just looking at these 2D images? Can you tell what's the height of uh, the person or was the size of the beta just looking at 2d images this is not possible we are living in a 3d world and experiencing it in 3d however we are forced to interact with 2d images at 3d universum we are changing this we develop ai algorithms which allow anybody digitize their world in 3d using only mobile phones the digitalization can be objects person or spaces but what do you do with these digital assets or 3D models? I don't know if I'm the only one who does online shopping just to gain time, but what if the cloth that you order doesn't fit you? Do you actually gain time? 
Considering packaging and transformation, can you imagine what are the costs of returns for the retailers? Or the assumption, uh, the, the carbon uh, emission, the amount of carbon emission due to transportation. What if I tell you we can reduce the cost of returns and, and damage to environment with the help of extracting more precise size information from these 3D assets? And don't you think it will be nice that you don't have to physically visit tens of houses before you buy your dream house or even redesign or refurnish your home or office from the comfort of your couch? With the availability of the 3D assets, this is also possible. We, are, we also develop solutions, computer vision and artificial intelligence solutions for other uh, big clients of ours. And here are some um, selected clients. We are fully bootstrapped. We didn't receive any investment. And in 2021, we, um, uh, we raised revenue of 1 million euros and expected revenue for 2022 is 2 million euros. So we are looking forward to meeting you in person and discuss why we are excited about the future. And thanks for your time. Everyone, I'm Abilash. I'm one of the co-founders at Registry and we are uh, the digital trucking platform. Within the trucking industry, uh, there is an issue that trucks move empty and they move slow. Currently, there are more than 6 million trucks in the European Union and then 25% of those on average drive empty. That's more than a million trucks driving empty on a daily basis. So secondly, if one wants to uh, ship a pallet within the Netherlands, it can take up to 48 hours before the pallet reaches its uh, destination. This is because pallets uh, travel inefficient route to multiple hub transfers increasing the amount of kilometers driven and increasing the pressure on the environment. So the solution to this is freight pooling. So by algorithmically combining multiple shipments together and assigning them to right trucks at the right time, uh, we could actually prevent those 1 million empty trucks from happening at the first place. And subsequently by doing so, uh, we can achieve faster delivery, uh, reducing the transit times from 48 hours to around eight hours. And by going directly to the destination, we can eliminate hub transfers and reduce emissions by reducing the amount of kilometers driven by your pallets. So the impact of this is that we guarantee you 50% faster delivery on your pallet shipments. And on top of that, we can save you up to 20% cost, 20% uh, in transport costs and up to 21% less kilometers driven, lowering the amount of emission of your cargo. So we are operational for over a year now and are active in Benelux and uh, we out of 100k targeted revenue in 2021, we have achieved 75% of it so far and are experiencing 25% to 50% growth per month. And this is the team. Uh, my co-founder uh, Yellow Music has 10 years of experience in logistics and I have a background in events and business development while uh, our lead developer, Lucian, has more than 20 years of experience in uh, enterprise software development. Um, same day delivery is the norm in parcel shipments, while registry is making it the norm in the pallet shipments. Uh, that's us. Thank you so much. AI here um, is uh, a question. Uh, so the AI aspect, it comes from uh, the routing uh, engine that we are using uh, at the moment. And uh, yeah, so uh, I wouldn't say that we are really far ahead with uh, AI uh, in, the, in the platform itself, in, in the current MVP. But then in the future, uh, we are basically uh, working with TLN planner uh, who have, uh, yeah, sort of uh, AI integrated into their uh, service engine, uh, routing engine. Uh, great, thank you very much. Uh, next, I would like to uh, invite Evangelos uh, Kanulos uh, on behalf of Elegon AI. Evangelos, uh, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. Do you hear me, Stratis? All right. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, that was uh, indeed a very inspiring uh, uh, talk. And I must say uh, that uh, Stratis and I, who are partners in crime on building Elegon, 
uh, were uh, we were really um, inspired uh, by by Cipher. I mean, it was a boost uh, to us as uh, full time uh, professors of AI um, to actually do something uh, uh, commercial and uh, val valorizing uh, some of our work. Uh, some of the lessons learned, uh, as well as uh, shared today by by Jurgen, but also shared to us earlier by Taco and Max. Uh, uh, are things that we really and seriously took into consideration. For example, uh, you know, looking for a sector in which AI can really make a difference in a robust, sustainable, scalable way and a sector in which AI can add value. Uh, for us, uh, uh, we believed after uh, one, one and a half years of exploration and uh, uh, a lot of uh, work uh, that we found this sector, and that sector is healthcare and the way to select the right pa uh, pa uh, patients for cancer immunotherapy. This is what Elogon AI does. Uh, essentially, you know, it is uh, needless to say that cancer uh, remains one of the leading causes of, uh, of death, uh, uh, despite all the COVID uh, uh, pandemic uh, um, uh, results of the COVID pandemic. And uh, what is quite interesting is that uh, the traditional chemotherapy is uh, uh, um, considered nowadays a treatment uh, that can be replaced better by new newer forms of uh, treatments. Uh, one of them is immunotherapy, which is a, a, a Nobel Award winning therapy, uh, which which has amazing results uh, uh, with respect to uh, survival rates and uh, toxicities to, to patients, but at the same time, it is rather expensive. And the worst thing, not it's not that it's expensive, that's, that's perfectly okay, it is that only 15% of patients uh, respond to that. And, uh, you know, one of the reasons is that it is quite difficult to understand which patient will respond to immunotherapy. <clears throat> Uh, the pathologist uh, uh, need to look uh, into uh, digital bi biopsies uh, of, uh, of tumor cells and they need to, to count things in there, quantify markers uh, that can be correlated to, to, to uh, response in immunotherapy, which is quite hard for, for a human. What we do in uh, Elogon AI is we do that, we help uh, uh, pathologists by developing AI solutions uh, using uh, deep uh, deep learning um, to identify and quantify three biomarkers, uh, three markers on the digital slides, on the digital pathology, uh, digital uh, biopsy slides that have been shown to correlate well with uh, 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 survival rates uh, of, uh, uh, of uh, tumor patients. Um, our solution is a solution that does not disrupt the traditional pipeline in, uh, in any negative way. Uh, so instead of the pathology simply looking through the digital slides through the, the uh, microscope, um, uploads uh, this, the, the biopsy slides to uh, our software as a service, uh, which analyzes and uh, creates the slides, creates a report on these three biomarkers that I just mentioned and reports back to the pathologist and the oncologist who decide on the basis of, uh, of uh, that um, uh, the kind of treatment that they should give and in particular whether or not they should move on with immunotherapy. Now the team itself, um, uh, I, you know, we have already um, a team of um, uh, about seven to eight uh, FTEs. Uh, we think that we have a broad expertise, uh, both in AI with myself, Stratis and Jonas Tervan. In, in uh, uh, medical imaging, uh, uh, Jonas is a, a, a group leader in uh, uh, NKI, but also in uh, pathology and oncology with Hugo Horlings, uh, one of the uh, top pathologists in, in the Netherlands and uh, uh, worldwide. Uh, but also Robert Kaupers, who has been uh, um, uh, quite experienced in developing AI solutions uh, for the field of he healthcare. Um, where we are today, um, two years after our, our, our founding uh, um, time, um, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, secured uh, no, 
uh, I think, a respectable non non dilutive uh, funding. Uh, but uh, we want to move fast uh, forward. We want to accelerate uh, going to the market, and so we're raising uh, uh, 10 million euros uh, uh, funding in this series, uh, and we hope to do that by uh, the summer of uh, 2022. So we can expand our solutions, we can strengthen our solutions, go to the market and uh, uh, get the, uh, the uh, commercial contracts. Um, this is all from me, and I'm happy to take uh, any questions. I do, somehow I don't hear you, Stratis. I'm not sure if it's my internet or yours. Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, uh, thank you very much, Evangelos, for the very nice presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, feel free to chat them in the chat box. Or, um, of course, you can also reach out to Evangelos uh, later on. Ah, what is your biggest challenge? We do have one question. Well, given that you are offering GPUs, uh, Jorgen, I would say your GPUs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, there are plenty of challenges. Uh, one challenge, of course, is always data in this field where privacy and GDPR and, uh, you know, all, all kinds of concerns, valid concerns on uh, health and medical data uh, are uh, kicking in. Uh, the second challenge is uh, actually uh, finding experts like Hugo and the very few experts to to create labels on this on this on this data to annotate them so we can train our algorithms. Uh, the third is uh, the algorithms themselves that they have to be robust in a in a huge variety of uh, uh, different types of inputs. Right? We need to work. Our algorithm needs to work well here in the Netherlands, but also in a, in a poorer country without the, the same kind of machinery to digitize things. There's a plenty of uh, interesting uh, things that are uh, uh, taking place. Uh, and the commercialization, I'm not an expert there, but uh, clearly, you know, uh, bringing an AI solution to, uh, to healthcare is challenging itself. Um, okay, very quick question, uh, and I expect a quick answer before moving to Japan. Yes, I see the, from, the uh, question on explainability of the models. So, so there is work on that. Uh, this is not our uh, current focus, but there is uh, several work on that that looks into how to explain uh, the biology behind uh, 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 the interactions of cells and, uh, and drugs, but uh, not, uh, it's not our priority right now. Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, Evangelos. Uh, if there are more questions, please uh, uh, reach out to him uh, later in the poster session. Uh, next, I would like to uh, invite on stage uh, Jakub. Uh, Jakub, uh, it's a great pleasure to have you uh, with us. Uh, the floor is yours. Thanks. Um, all right. So um, I'm Jakub. Um, I've been in AI for quite a long time, since the early 90s, which makes for almost... Uh, uh, 30 years, and um, I basically love building AI systems and building AI companies, which I did previously uh, founding uh, TextKernel, and more recently um, starting Zeta Alpha. And with Zeta Alpha, the problem that we are uh, tackling is really a problem which is very close to my heart, is um, how do you get AI and data science teams, especially in industry, to stay up to date with um, the advance of the field? Um, we go to conferences, there's so much new stuff coming out. How do you keep track of that with limited time? Um, so that's why we've built for ourselves and others like us uh, the Zeta Alpha um, discovery platform. So basically it starts with discovering content through neural search, uh, through finding related content, visualization and social media signals. You organize your work in uh, personalized topics using tags. And once you have defined these tags, you start to receive timely um, recommendations on a need to know basis tailored to your uh, interests. And um, moreover, you can uh, share and reuse um, these collections and notes and knowledge within your team, a little bit like Spotify playlists. So who are we as a team? We're a... Um, bunch of enthusiastic uh, researchers and developers. And since um, uh, the summer also a uh, commercial team, uh, we started in Amsterdam. I'm very happy to uh, have good connections on the Science Park with uh, Evangelos team and the IR lab and the many other 
great research groups in, um, in UFA. Um, our goal is to build a smarter way to discover and organize uh, knowledge for AI and data science teams in academia, but especially in industry. And we do that through our platform, but also through content on our blogs, through webinars and through workshops that we organize. And really, we believe that long term, AI and especially natural language understanding has the potential to help people make better decisions at work uh, using AI based research assistance. Uh, we do a lot of uh, our own research also uh, on uh, neural retrieval. I won't go into detail here, uh, but basically neural uh, search enables us to uh, break loose from keyword-based search, uh, bridging the lexical gap and um, uh, providing relevant results for uh, complex and long queries, query by example, which allows us to basically transform search, uh, classical search into more of a discovery engine and long term by understanding what you're working on and what could be relevant for that to um, transform the discovery engine into more of a research assistant. Um, so that's um, what we're doing. And uh, really, I uh, uh, would like to invite you to um, uh, try the platform, uh, contact me, or um, um, register through our website, uh, zalpha.com. And we're also hiring uh, research engineers. Thank you very much. Uh, next, uh, Svetlana, an, uh, an alumni of our lab. Uh, uh, she did uh, her PhD with our group, and now she's the CEO of uh, Pixel AI. Um, yeah, Svetlana, uh, you can start whenever you uh, would like. Hi, nice to see you, Stratis. Uh, so, hi, everyone. My name is Svetlana, and I'm the founder and CEO of Pixel. Uh, we provide uh, visual AI solutions for better search in uh, fashion e-commerce. Uh, the problem today for e-commerce companies is that they have to work with manually tagged uh, and incomplete data. And uh, this bad data quality makes it difficult for their shoppers to search for products. And if shoppers can't find what they're looking for, they're not buying, which means lost sales. Um, this is where Pixel comes in. Uh, we automatically enrich uh, product data by extracting attributes from images. Uh, our AI system can localize where in the, in the image a clothing item appears and detect its category and attributes. Uh, so we are helping fashion retailers to reduce operational costs, process images faster, and increase conversion rates. Uh, we generate revenue by offering yearly subscriptions with uh, monthly packages. These are volume-based, meaning the more images you tag, the lower the price per image is. And uh, we've been on the market for three and a half years now. Uh, and this year, our revenue has accelerated. Currently, we are at 130K revenue with an MRR of 10K. And we are serving Aiden clients. Uh, the, opportunity, sorry, the opportunity is uh, huge. Our market is uh, essentially uh, every company that is processing fashion images with an estimated value of 250 million. Um, as a company, um, our vision is to become a product discovery platform for e-commerce operating in uh, different verticals. So we have plans to move into home and furniture, also beauty, electronics, and consumer packaged goods. Uh, we have a strong, diverse, and complementary team uh, with deep knowledge in AI and combined with uh, extensive commercial experience. Um, our startup is growing fast, but we want to grow faster. Uh, that's why we are raising 1 million in Q1 2020. 22 to accelerate growth and uh, as a company our crazy big ambition is to revolutionize how industries work with ai so join us in changing it thank you i hope i managed the two minutes time frame uh, ah, now i can uh, i can talk uh, yeah thank you very much uh, you were very punctual <laughs> I, I took Quite the nice. timing very seriously. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that, that's actually really nice. Um, okay, so uh, are there any questions for uh, Svetlana? If uh, you do have some questions, uh, please uh, type them in the chat. Uh, in, in the meantime, Evangelos uh, gave quite a strong inverse, uh, endorsement, uh, endorsement for uh, Z Alpha. So uh, there is a question. How are you competing with a big tech offering already trained models to do the same task? 
Yes, that, that's a great question. Everybody's asking, so what about Google? So I think uh, the biggest difference between Google and let's say the other big tech companies offering uh, similar tech services like uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon as well. So is that we are really focused on fashion. So we actually tackling a niche uh, industry. So uh, whereas the big uh, tech companies are offering very general tagging with uh, only the categories, we have built a very detailed taxonomy that is focused only on fashion. And this is actually what clients are looking for. They don't only want to detect that it's jeans, but they also want to detect the, the color, the waist type, the length. And we have around uh, so far a taxonomy of uh, over 308 uh, attributes only for fashion. So. Um, Unless Google decides to go really deep into fashion, I think we are good there. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and are you training your own models or building on top of Google Azure AWS? Uh, yes, we are training our own models. Of course, we are using a high performance machine on Google Cloud. So we are hosted uh, all our API uh, and production is hosted in Google Cloud, but it's all uh, uh, our models trained. And uh, we also label a lot of data in-house in order to train these models. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, excellent. Uh, an excellent comment. Uh